leads a curious, reasonable-minded wonder if these two cases are connected. Uh, the problem is, though, from from an investigative standpoint, is we don't know where Brian Laundry and Gabby Garcia were between the 13th and uh, the 14th or 15th, which is actually the time frame we believe that uh, Kylan and Crystal were murdered. Welcome to Reporter Room, where we seek truth and justice. My name is Jessica Della Davies. I'm an investigative journalist. Today, we're going to talk about the autopsy results for Brian Laundrie. Does it all add up? We're also going to revisit Brian Laundrie's connections to the mysterious Mohab murders of Moonflower grocery employee Kylan Schulte and wife Crystal Turner. Authorities seem anxious to brush this case under the rug. Why is that? Everything I'm sharing with you today is my opinion, and opinions are not facts, so please don't send any negativity to anyone, anytime, anywhere. Let's be kind to each other. Also, I want to uh, give a special shout out to Sonia Stanger for becoming a channel member. Welcome to the reporter room. Family Sonia, we're so glad to have you. Let's discuss Brian Laundrie's autopsy first, and then we're going to get into Brian's connections to Kylan Schulte and Crystal Turner, so please stay with me. Brian passed away from a self-inflicted gunshot wound to the head that caused extensive fractures in his skull, according to the newly released report by Florida's medical examiner's office. A single bullet entered his brain at the left temple and exited through the right, traveling slightly upward. This is interesting because Brian was right-handed but yet this entered from the left temple. Put a pin in that because we're going to revisit that in a little bit. Before we go any further, please subscribe and give this video a thumbs up to help Reporter Room grow. And the best way you can help me is to watch this video all the way through and then maybe consider watching some of my other videos. We've learned that Brian's bones were scattered and had been fed on by feral dogs, coyotes, raccoons, and some rodents. Apparently his bones showed signs of gnawing from post-mortem scavengers, and most of the damage appears to have been done to Brian's extremities. Brian's remains were discovered after his parents, Chris and Roberta Laundry, went into the Makayachi Reserve and found his belongings the morning the park was reopened to the public back in October. There were two sites where items were found, a primary site and a secondary site. Authorities found green shorts, slip-on shoes, a white metal ring, a backpack, and the weapon. It was located next to the remains and it was a Windicator revolver and it had fired one round and had two live rounds still left in the chamber. At the secondary scene, authorities found more skeletal remains in a handwritten half note. Why just a half note? Why didn't he finish the note? Authorities also found a Mohab coffee roaster's hat and a dry bag containing Brian's journal and a wooden box containing a smaller notebook and a photograph of himself. It's believed that Brian's body submerged in three feet of swamp waters and it remained there for an extended period of time, which is why it decomposed so quickly. This was evidenced by the watermarks on the nearby trees. For those of you who've been following this case, you know that Brian was initially identified by dental records. Later, his identity was confirmed by a DNA match made from his teeth and femur bones to his parents. So his DNA was matched to swabs taken from Chris and Roberta Laundry. Chris and Roberta Laundry refused to share Brian's quote, social history. And I'm unclear as to why they would want to hold, withhold that. Maybe they were just tired, but is there something that we don't know about Brian's social history that would, you know, be worth knowing in this case? Brian ran home to Northport, Florida on September 1st, driving Gabby's van, using Gabby's credit cards, and with Gabby's cell phone. 
And authorities in the Mohab murder case of Kylan and Crystal, they want us to rule Brian out of the murders. They've stated that the cell tower data doesn't match. However, Brian's remains were not recovered with a cell phone, which is interesting since Roberta and Chris Laundrie reportedly got him a cell phone when he returned to Northport, Florida. Brian lied to the Mohab police on August the 12th during the infamous stop. He told the police he didn't have a cell phone, but look at these pictures. Brian is pulling a cell phone out of his pocket moments after claiming to police he didn't have one. So we know Brian left the van life trip twice. Both times, Brian went running home to Northport, Florida after women disappeared. The first time was August 17th, just one day after Kylan and Crystal were reported missing by their co-workers. The second time Brian went running home to Northport was after Gabby disappeared. All three women were found outside their campsites. All three women were found near a creek. All three women were in the vicinity of Brian Laundry. Law enforcement wants us to believe that Brian is not connected to Kylan and Crystal's deaths, even though he had a motive due to the August 12th Mohab police stop. For more on this, please see our four-part series by Reporter Room on the Mohab murders of Kylan and Crystal. They seem anxious to quell YouTubers especially from speaking out about Kylan and Crystal. And I did this when they initially requested it because I was expecting them to come forward with some evidence that Brian was not involved or with some evidence that someone else was involved. Neither of these things has occurred. And many of us are wondering if authorities are just anxious to close their case on Gabby Petito, Kylan Schulte, and Crystal Turner. Many residents of Moab are wondering if authorities are placing tourism over justice. We know the Grand County Sheriff's Office didn't even find Kylan and Crystal. Sean Paul, Kylan's dad, had to crowdsource and Cindy Sue Hunter went out and found the women's campsite and also found Kylan. She then called the authorities because she didn't want to disturb the crime scene and they found Crystal nearby. The first time Brian hightailed at home was August 17th and the story that was given to us for the reason that Brian went home to Northport, Florida has changed repeatedly. First we were told that Brian returned home to empty a storage locker. But this didn't make sense because who leaves the trip of a lifetime to empty a storage locker? The second story we were told was Brian returned home to empty a storage locker to save money so he and Gabby could extend their van life trip. But again, this story makes no sense as storage lockers in the Northport area only cost an average of a hundred bucks a month. And the airfare for a round trip plane ticket from Moab, Utah to Florida and also putting Gabby up in a hotel while Brian was gone was way more costly. So the story was changed a third time. And this time we were told that Brian had a fight with Gabby, returned home and needed some things from his storage locker. What things? And why does the reason that Brian returned home on August the 17th, the day after Kylan and Crystal were reported missing, keep changing. Please let me know what you think about this case. Subscribe and leave me a comment.